Welcome to the sixth annual Innovation Showcase. Can you guys hear me okay in the back? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. 2022, sixth year of doing this. We're excited with how it turned out. We had over 400 people vote on today's innovations. It was very, very, very close for first place. So we'll be announcing that very shortly. Just a quick reminder of what got us here. And then I'll have a few words from a few people very quickly. And then we'll announce the winners. So we put together a team to reward innovation here at DOT because it's happening all the time and we knew that. So we put together a team of grassroots folks to um, reward those folks, first of all, but also to kind of spread the word of those innovations because if somebody is doing something in District 8 that might be useful to someone in District 5, let's say, we want to spread the word. We didn't really have a good way to do that before. So this is one way that we thought we might be able to do that. We've done that somewhat successfully, I'd say. And additionally, what we want to do is just make everybody aware of all the cool things that we do at the DOT and make us more aware of what goes on and what keeps people up at night and the ways that they've gone about it or gone about fixing it, I guess you'd say. So those were our goals when we started and um, we've been doing it six years and I think we've done a pretty good job. So um, thank you to our team. Uh, first and foremost, you guys have been amazing. Uh, Emily, Charlene, Ava, Steph is somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Brandon, who is not here, and Susie are not, are not here either. Thank you guys so much. Another great year in the books. Before we, an or before we read the winners, I'd like to hear a quick word from our special guest from District 5, Doug Hovid is here. Doug, if you want to talk just for a minute about what innovation um, means to you here at DOT. Like, uh, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Doug Hovitt. I've been with the department for about 25 years or so. Um, several of them were in this building upstairs, and I look across and I do see faces that I do recognize, but that I also see a lot of new faces. And so, if you're new to me, nice to meet you. Um, I've also been an entrepreneur for the last 17 years or so. And through that process of, of kind of living two uh, lives, kind of sort of, one uh, with the department and one outside of the department, I can see the advantages that innovation gives you because it allows you to take, you know, ideas that um, maybe haven't been thought of or that have been thought of, and then you can make that refinement to improve it. And that, I think, is really important for why we do what we do here. Today's presentations are, are a way for us to showcase those innovations and, and, and how we can make our day easier and better, right? But it's not just an idea for the sake of innovation, for the sake of ideas, but it's, it's, it's bringing those, all of those ideas together and then selecting the top ones that make the biggest impact for us within the department. And part of that, um, I think comes into when people say, oh, you know, I could have I thought of that. I could have put a camera on the thing. But sometimes people don't. And, it's, it's, it, and people don't because, well, it, it could be too hard, right? And they see a lot of uh, potentially like scarcity mindset thinking, right? Part of that could be, well, uh, we don't have the funds for it. Well, when you guys did it, you guys put it on a stolen kid's <laughs> RC yeah, car. And so you've got some things like that where it doesn't have to be this like incredible lift, right? You don't have to have $250,000 to make something happen. It's just a matter, it's a matter that you have to go through the process, figure out what it is, and then identify like those rocks in our shoes, right? And then work, work through those. And I think that part of us from like a, instead of a scarcity mindset, I think if we approach it from like an abundance mindset, we've actually got a much better approach, you know, it's a more positive attitude towards things. And I think that's a better way to work through problems, right? With the department, you know, the culture's kind of shifting, I've seen in the, in the last 25 years, from a, look, we've always done it this way, Corey, we're not gonna do this thing, that thing sounds stupid, we're not doing it. It's too expensive, it's too much time, everybody's swamped. Uh, I get that a lot. You probably, he, he may, he may. But when it comes to what we're trying to do, each one of these projects through here has the potential to really leverage ideas to the benefit of a lot of folks, right? So whether it is, is that, because like anybody who has crawled through a culvert pipe, that like, like when you're this size, you're crawling through culvert pipes. I was a summer temp. 
And so you get about like 15 feet in and you're pushing this like raccoon carcass in front of you. And you're like, you know, there's a better way. <laughs> and so you go through that process and then it's like, I wonder what's a better way. And so whether it's that, whether it is, where's the plow blade? Uh, you guys doing the plow blade sensor? That is a hell of an idea because those, the blades are, they're heavy. If you get into the mold board, you start, you have to repair that stuff. And, and that's not an easy process. The easy process is to know when they're, when, they're, when they're worn to that level before it actually starts to damage equipment. Because turns out when we, are, when we need the plows, we need the plows, right? And it's like when you need your air conditioning, you don't know it's broken during the winter. You know that your air conditioning's broken during the summer because that's when you need it. It's an advantage to us to have those plows on the road when we need them on the road. The responsibility that we have to one another to improve that isn't like a job mandate, right? It's not part of our job description, but it is something that we do have a responsibility to one another to you know, identify those problems, leave the place a little nicer than we found it, you know, work through ideas and build that network. Like I said, when I first showed up here, I know a handful of folks in here, but I haven't met everybody. Everybody in here is committed to one another to make our day and our jobs and our lives a little bit easier, a little bit better. What I'm gonna leave you with, because I think my five minutes is getting close. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing great. Yeah. You got a minute or two. Okay. Is is basically, you know, pay attention, right? Find those points that you're consistently saying, man, I wish there was a better way. This thing is a rock in my shoe. And if we can find those and identify those and then figure out a plan to that. And then the plan, how do you do the plan? Well, the plan, there's kind of two parts. One is just the conceptual, wouldn't it be nice if part? But then the other part is like the sales pitch part because sometime you're gonna have to come up to somebody and say, hey, I need to, you got a kid, right? Like, let me, you mind if I steal some of his toys? Like, yeah, what, what, why are you doing that? No, get your own toy. But you'll have to figure out that, that game plan because depending on the scale of the solution, it's gonna require a little bit different lift, right? Sometimes that lift might be in time, it might be in people, it might be monetary. And if you can figure out how to do that and kind of develop your sales pitch, for lack of a better description, that will matter because it's easy to say, well, you know, uh, I, I talked to Corey and Corey said no. But if you can come up with, if, if you're excited about the idea, right, then you, that enthusiasm kind of comes out when you're discussing it with folks. And then other people can get excited about it because you're excited about it. And if your reason, your why for bringing it up is big enough, you'll start to get other advocates for your idea. And then you get enough advocates for your idea. And then there starts to get like, well, you know, I thought it was a dumb idea until I saw Corey liked it. And then you liked it. And then you liked it. And before you know it, there's this like overwhelming, like, okay, well, maybe this is something that we can do. And you may not know the person that is an expert in that area, but you may. And if you can help me by connecting me with that other person, then pretty soon it's not as heavy a lift as we think. And we owe it to one another to be able to leverage those ideas, and to make our work a little bit easier, a little bit better, a little more efficient, a little safer, a little faster. So thank you guys for all coming. I, I, I think this is a great program, and I'm happy to be part of it. So thanks. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> Up next, we have uh, Director John Selmer. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I haven't been here quite as long, just a little over a year now, so I think this was one of the uh, first events I had uh, uh, participation in as the uh, new director for the Department of Transportation. And to me, it, it is just great looking at uh, the innovations that are presented here that there's actually a diversity of mixture. Uh, some showing craft skills, in terms of working with your hands and being creative there, and then others using newer technology in terms of uh, digital and data. Uh, so and what is a testament, too, is that uh, the peers recognize the importance of innovation through that broad spectrum. So to me, you know, that was great to see. And uh, is also a testament, you know, this is just uh, a few of the many 
innovative, creative things that are occurring within our agency. And I agree, it's a lot of hard work. A lot of innovators, they don't necessarily like uh, putting on a show and tell, or at least where they've got to submit documentation, go through that whole process. And so we're always looking at ways to make it better. Um, I told uh, Corey and Doug I wasn't going to talk as long as them, but uh, Corey had a great idea. He thought that uh, to really make it more streamlined, he should be able to take 10% off the top for the awards <laughs> yeah, for administrative fee, but he didn't talk about sharing that with the rest of his team, though, out there. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that, is that a good one there uh, to help out? <laughs> No, but uh, really I think what we're here for is what Corey's going to do next and, and uh, announce the winners. Uh, this is a great time, and uh, I'm glad we as an agency uh, promote this, uh, take time to do this, take time to celebrate together. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, so first, in, in, and in no particular order uh, in the Elite Eight, the hay permits from all dist every district uh, was represented. Operations, controller, and BTSD. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Next up in the Elite Eight was the shoulder material striker from District 3. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Next up was the right-of-way deed acquisition from right-of-way in strategic planning. I think they're right over there. Congratulations. Oh, I should have mentioned, these teams are all getting 75 bucks a person, just FYI. And then last but not least of the Elite Eight, the interactive bike map from Strategic Planning and PD BTSC. Congrats. Okay, um, and then we have, every year we have director's office picks, so our directors, Mo, Khalil, and John, um, reviewed every single innovation and picked a few that didn't win in the voting, but they felt were deserving of some recognition. Um, we lost some, some WASHTO grant funding this year, so we only had the ability to do two director's office picks this year, unfortunately. So, um, but, so we, we got two of them. These, uh, these folks will be getting 75 bucks a person also. First director's office pick was the training intake one-stop shop from HR, strategic planning right away in District 5. And the second director's office pick was the clarity task assignment transfer tool from Steve Moore. Congratulations. All right, down to the, uh, to the fir first through fourth place. All right, thank you guys. Uh, $100 per person, fourth place, the mechanical rocker test ice melting capacity. And that was from materials and research and operations division. There's a lot of people on those teams, so I won't read all the names, but congratulations guys. There you go. Thank you. In third place, getting $125 per person, was the weather event mobile application from BTSD Bridge Operations District 8 and District 3. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna announce second place. So this is runner up this year. Again, very, very, very close race. Uh, I think it was by eight votes. With 35% of the vote coming in second this year, and taking home $250 per person was the plow protection system from District 1. <laughs> Kurt Steiner, Don Warnke, Andy Stander, and Carl Rohr. And that leaves only one left, which uh, $500 per person and the innovation of the year with 37% of the vote was the culvert inspection vehicle from District 8. Justin Ripley, John Raymond, Eddie Vodopich, Bo Painter, and Carl Hart. Congrats. All right, that about does it. Wraps up the sixth annual Innovation Showcase. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, enjoy the new auditorium. Thanks for all the work that went into that. Thanks to Clint, thanks to the team, thanks to all the innovators. We'll see you again next year. Thank you, guys.